Okay, here is a new process video. These are much bigger, these ones. They're over a metre squared each. And they're part of a few commissions that I've got going at the moment. I'm just going to talk you through part of it. And on part of it, I'll go a little bit faster so that the video doesn't take too long. On this one, I'm going to start with heavy contrast. So I've mixed myself up. It's actually quite a dark blacky red that I often put in my paintings. It's just not black. It's got a few other colors in it, but it looks almost like a dark burgundy. And I'm activating the canvas. So at the moment, there is absolutely no thought to anything but getting these two white canvases activated in some way. And I'm going to try and do them quite differently, even though they're part of the same commission. I just want to start off in different ways and see how that will bring them together. So on this one, as you can see, I'm putting down quite a bit of dark colour. While I'm not really thinking about composition, I am trying to get a spread of that dark colour across um, and in different spots. In some ways, I'm working on that rule of three that I talk about. I've got a very big spot at the book bottom. I've got that cross in the middle. And now I'm giving myself something different up in the top left. I'm going to bring on a slightly lighter colour now just to bring in something else. Um, I've pre-mixed these colours uh, just to start off the, the, the pieces. This one is uh, a bit of a mixture again, but this is the a little bit of the deep red with a quinacridone magenta. And I'm going to get that um, squeegee out to shift it in a slightly different way across the canvas. really trying to cover a lot of the white background. So I'm bringing out a different brush here just to get some different types of strokes on the canvas. At this stage, I'm really, I love, love, love the beginning of a piece because I can just be very free. I don't have to think a lot. I'm looking for things to, um, that I can react to when I come back to these canvases. So I'm wanting lots of contrast, lots of different marks, thin, uh, lots of coverage, lots of big, heavy, thick marks. I'm really pretty free and just enjoying the way that the paint is moving across the white canvas. This is just joy for me. Um, and all that I really have in my mind is making interesting marks, seeing what the paint does and covering, getting good coverage. That's what I really, um, that's all I'm really thinking about in the early layers of these paintings. But, you know, if you have a nervous feeling when you start a blank white canvas. I suggest you just kind of let go and know that this is just a first layer. Know that you can do anything on top um, and just kind of let expectations go and have fun. You cannot get it wrong. This bit is pure experimentation. It's looking for happy accidents. It's looking for, oh, how does that colour react with the white background? How does the black or the darker colour react with the uh, lighter colour on top? I like to stay as curious as possible, as open as possible, and as having as much fun as I can. Okay, I've got pretty good spread on that first canvas now, so I'm going to start on the second one. Um, I really love those long brushes because you can get some really nice thin strokes. Uh, this one I know I'm just, I've decided I'm just going to start off quite pastely. So I've mixed myself up some light greens and some light pinks, whites, creams, 
Uh, and so I'm going to begin in a completely different way because that keeps it interesting for me, particularly across two paintings. Uh, if I start off in different ways and it's a, where, where will these two meet? How can I bring them together? Uh, which way is um, more enjoyable? I'm just really um, keeping it quite curious and um, fun at this point. As you can see, that colour there, that light pink is very pastel uh, made up of just a tiny bit of pink and a lot of white and probably a little bit of that green in there to make it a little bit greyer. Got a very big brush there, so I like changing up between the brushes so I'm getting different marks on both canvases. As you can see, with working on the floor, what's good about it is that I can go right off the canvas sometimes. You'll see with the... Um, the canvas that I've already begun. I've gone right off the edge with a lot of those strokes so that it it gives a bigger feeling to the painting when they're these strokes that don't end on the actual piece. Really love that colour that I'm painting with now. It's almost a rosy pink. So again with this one I'm just looking for coverage uh, and differences so there was all of that pastel now I'm bringing in a darker color it's all feeling a bit too light for me I needed to do something a bit more dramatic so I'm bringing in that dark deep ready black I'm just getting more coverage on this thing moving from those bright um, it's almost a um, cherry red color to the light pinks getting different strokes on there, getting a bit of mix in the paints, um, very much just in activating the canvas. I really, really love these light pinky gray colors. I think they're gonna be a fun early layer. And in my head right now, I know I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can do a really dark canvas on the other one and a really light canvas on this one and see and see what happens. But whether I keep that going or not, um, time will tell. It's all a matter of what I'm feeling um, in each layer and in each paint session um, because it's an intuitive process for me. It really um, does change up a lot between each paint. And, and I'm okay with that. This is almost like a beigey color. And for someone who really loves bright colors, I love bringing in the contrast, which is the, um, I call them almost like dead colors because they just are nice and opaque and quite dull in some ways, but they're such a good complement against the bright, the bright cherry red and the magenta. Now I'm wanting to bring in some darkness into that corner contrast. I often find I do bring dark colors in to that bottom corner for some reason. It might change in later layers, but it just seems to be a natural go-to for me. There are things I find interesting. Like I've not, not really noticed it before until I'm looking at it now that I've done both. But and then now, now I recall that that seems to happen a bit with my paintings. And it's like, the question is, what is it about that bottom right-hand corner that feels like it needs to have the, the weight there? It's just a curiosity for me to, to feel into. Everything we do, we do for a reason. And painting for me is just an expression of, of what's going on inside. So these things that I do are interesting to me and say something about the painting itself. So you'll notice that when I do something in one area, as I said before, I tend to do the same thing or this, use the same color in a couple of different areas just to continue, um, have some continuity between um, the different places on the canvas. Even though they're quite different, there is that continuity of color. I'm loving that cherry red on this one. And I'm loving those marks, those big round or oval shaped marks. Now trying to fill out a little bit more on this corner, get rid of 
the white underneath, a little bit of blending between the light areas and the dark areas. And there I've nearly filled the whole space. And so I come back to this one, thinking that this color that I've used on that will be a nice complement. And I like how you can see the lines underneath it still, even though it is quite a opaque color. It's a little bit of the line still showing through. It's a great thing about working on two pieces at once, especially when they're as big as these, as you can just move from one to the other and get a bit of flow happening between the two. This is even lighter. It's almost, almost white, but not white. That will show up a few more of the marks on top of that dusty pink, beigey colors. Okay, now I'm just adding a little bit more life to some of the darker areas by adding in some transparent magenta. Sometimes when you use those dark colors, they can just get a bit too solid and heavy. So I'll just lighten them up by bringing something brighter on top. And instead of the magenta on this one, I've gone for a green gold, which is really going to change this one up. Not sure if it's going to be for the better or not, but you never know what that's going to do in later layers. Sometimes, like right now, I'm looking at it thinking, I don't particularly like what it's doing, but I do know that the sometimes it's those jarring kind of uglier bits that help the painting in later layers. So... I've learned to kind of go with them rather than pull back too early. I do like the way that the um, squeegee brings everything together a little bit quicker than the brush does, spreads the layers a little bit. Something to think about sometimes when you're painting is don't st always stop yourself when you're doing something jarring. It can be, it can make for a more interesting piece. That's where the 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 ugly and the beauty come together. You've got to have one for the other to show even more. Now I'm trying to spread out that very, very light apricot color, putting a bit of um, water straight onto the canvas to get a bit more of a spread, getting my big brush out to blend a little bit more. Again, early layers, so I'm just having fun at this point. Just seeing what happens um, when I do certain things as opposed to thinking at all past um, past these knowing that they're just beginning stages. Now you notice I'm working in a palette and also in little pots um, and I'll often spread between to try and get some cohesion between all of the colors. So here I am really just trying to get rid of a lot of the white still just get that complete coverage and I'm quite enjoying this peachy kind of shade on this other canvas. I'm loving all the marks, the extra strokes, but I'm still just getting paint coverage, getting rid of the white, getting rid of the raw canvas, or the gessoed canvas in this case. Look at that those big bold marks underneath though I like that I like the way the light colors are coming in over the top of those 
you'll notice that with the bigger canvases, I tend to use bigger brushes, not so much the smaller ones. More um, house painting brushes, to be honest. I like the uh, the hardness of them. I like the way, the way that they give you a stroke um, on the canvas. Um, and I like the coverage that they do when it is a bigger space. I might come over it with a smaller brush as I did on the other one in some parts. I imagine I'll come back in with that on later layers. Um, I was just experimenting, but in these early layers, it's good to get some good big marks on big canvases. Bringing back some of the really deep, deep colour jumps out at you as soon as I put it on there. When I've been working with the lighter colours enough, then I'm just like craving for something deeper and bolder. Here I am just looking for variation now of marks on these early layers, giving myself some more things to play with, more things to respond to. I'm also just really enjoying the way that dark colour moves across the canvas. So when I enjoy something, I, I do more of it. I often trip over glasses, pots of paint as I move around. I'm in a, I'm really in the zone, so I don't tend to see things that are around me. I wonder if you get in the zone in that way, trip over things. So that's the end of the beginning layers. Uh, I hope you'll stick with me through this one um, because uh, I'll be adding more videos as these ones progress. Thanks for following. Mm -hmm.